My name is Mark, and I'd like to welcome you to Tech for Teachers. For all of you who want to get started using LaTeX to create beautifully looking documents that you can use in your classroom, we're going to get started right away by heading over to overleaf.com. And the reason why I've chosen Overleaf is it's just such an easy way to get started. It's online, it can be all done in your browser, and there's nothing to install in your system. All you need to do is create a username, a password and register or you can even get started with your Google account. Since I have an account already I am going to get started by logging in. All right let's get logged in. Now we see right away that I have no projects in my account so we're going to create a new project and for today that's going to be a blank project and we are prompted for a project name and I'm going to call this one hello project. So let's get that created. Overleaf is going to set up the environment for us and we are going to change the name of our project name. So we're going to move our cursor up to the top here, hit the pencil and change the name to hello new project. And now we can talk a little bit about what we see here. Now to the left we have a window which is the file tree window. All your files will be there. The window in the middle is your source code window so all the code that you're going to be writing is going to occur there and over to the right here is a preview of our PDF document. Notice that we can change the size of these windows using the handles here and sometimes we just might need a slight readjustment to what we're working on. We can also toggle those left and right windows to be hidden or viewable. So a lot of the time you might not need to see your file tree and maybe if you really want to focus on your writing you can just hide the PDF window. Let's take a look at this file tree window. We can see our current file is main.tech and we can add new files here, new folders to organize files and even upload additional files including images that we can use in our project. But for today we're just going to be using this main.tech file and you can see the contents of this file in our source window. Now let's move up to the top left corner here to check out the menu. From here you can download all the source of your project and you can use this elsewhere or you can download a PDF generated by your project. Now if we scroll down just a little bit here we can take a look at all the settings that we have for our project. You can choose between different compilers. So we're going to use the default which is PDF LaTeX. Uh, you can choose between different uh, tech live distributions. So if you're running some legacy code that won't run under 2020 you have that option. But we're going to use 2020 because this is brand new. Uh, you can only compile one document at a time. So we have chosen main.tech as our main document. Uh, we have some spell checking options here. Autocomplete, uh, which is going to autocomplete uh, some commands that we're typing a little bit later on. Uh, auto close brackets, we want that toggled to on. You can see there are an incredible number of brackets used here. So we're going to have those automatically closed for us. Uh, code check. Uh, I would suggest we have this toggled to on uh, and this will just ensure that our code has no errors in it uh, before compilation. Uh, the editor here, uh, we can change the theme. So maybe if you want something a little bit lighter, so there is the overleaf theme, but I'm going to go back to my favorite dark theme, Dracula. Uh, we can use different key bindings. Uh, maybe a little bit later on I'll switch to my favorite, which is Vim. Although for those of you who prefer Emacs key bindings, you also have access to those. Uh, the font size I have at 20 right now, which is a little large, but we are creating a video. So maybe you want to change that down to something smaller, like 20 point, but since we're making a video, we're going to be a bit larger. Uh, there's two font families to choose from here. We'll keep it on the default. You can change the line height as well. We'll keep it at normal. And you can change the PDF viewer. And we'll keep that as is as well. So here's the main idea. We take our source code to generate this PDF document. And the process of taking our source code and having it interpreted as a PDF is called compilation. So you see this green button called recompile. Well, by pressing this, we compile our document and we do it many times, so hence recompile.
Now, just because you make a change to your source code does not mean that the preview will update. Now, there is this option uh, where we can toggle it to automatically preview the changes, but I don't see any reason to do so. Uh, now, you can also have it compile a bit faster, so we can use draft mode, and I would highly recommend that you check your syntax before compiling, uh, just because if you have errors, you're probably not going to get a document uh, to preview anyways. So since we are writing source code, at some point we're going to end up with some errors. So we also will have to access our log files, and it's here where we'll be able to troubleshoot and resolve our errors in our code. So you can see here I'm taking a look at the raw log file. It looks a little bit complicated and overwhelming, but trust me, you'll spend enough time here that you'll be able to use this uh, to help you fix your source code at some point. Uh, you can also download your PDF from this pane as well. So let's start working with the source code. The source code is divided into two main parts. This first part that I've highlighted is called the preamble. And the second part is the document environment. And this is where you're going to spend most of your time generating the content of your document. We are going to focus in on the first part of this source code, which is the preamble. So I'm going to insert a line here. And I'm going to start this line with a percentage character. Now this character tells the LaTeX compiler to ignore what I'm typing. And here I have write preamble starts here. And this is ignored by the LaTeX compiler and it will not appear in our document anywhere. So you can think of this as a way of commenting our code. So you can see here that I was able to use these two lines of code as delimiters for the preamble. So now within the preamble itself, we're going to take a look at the first command. And the command is preceded by a backslash. And the first command we're going to take a look at is the document class command. Now this command you can think of as setting up the template for our document. So we started off with the article template, but now we're going to move to Beamer. And when we compile our document, we will now end up with a slide deck. Are you writing a book? Well, then you could use the book class and it would compile a book. Uh, if you're writing an exam or a test, which we're going to be doing a lot, we would use the exam class and this would be uh, used to format our document as an exam. And of course, there are many customizations you can do for each of these. Now in line number three, we have the first instance of the use package command, which is used to import code to extend the functionality of the document class. So it's not tied necessarily to the article class or the Beamer class. Uh, it is uh, just used to extend whatever document class you have. Now in this case, we are using the input ENC, so inputting coding package. And this package actually has an option placed in the square brackets here, which is UTF-8. And this package, input ENC, is used to ensure that the characters we're typing in this source file are using the character set UTF-8. Now, it is possible that you want to reference a package using the use package command, but it doesn't have an option. So for example, use package AMS math. Now I think AMS math is part of the article uh, class, so I am going to comment that out with a uh, percentage character, and then I'll just double check that later to make sure that I don't need that package and then delete it a little bit later. Uh, looking at the next command here, title, I'm going to change the argument of this uh, command from hello project to my first paper. And when I compile the document, now we actually see a change uh, in the document. So the title has been changed. Now we're going to go ahead and change the argument of the author uh, command here to Mr. Olson. And once again, we can see the changes reflected in our compiled document there. Now I've deleted one of the curly braces here and you can see an error has popped up in our editor and we see we have an unclosed group. And 
this causes a lot of problems if we try to compile. We get a lot of red, and that's not good, and, well, we don't have a document anymore. Uh, and we can check the log here, and this is, you're going to get very good at this because this is where you can learn to resolve uh, the errors in your document. And here I can very easily see that I am missing a curly uh, bracket there on the author command. Now, notice what happens when I get rid of the code check, so I toggle that to off. Now, in the source code, I have no pointer to where the error is, but when I recompile, there's an error, but I can't see where it is in the source. So if I t toggle that back to on, I get this nice little warning in my code editor to help track down where the error is. So I'll just put in that curly bracket, recompile, and everything's back to good. Now let's move on to the date command here. Right now we have typed in November 2020, but we're going to change it to today. So this is a command, uh, so backslash today. And what this is going to do when we compile, it's going to replace November 2020 to today's date, which is November 7th. So we can see that is reflected in the new compile document. All right, that's enough for the preamble. Let's get into the document environment here. Let's also just comment out this first command, which is make title and see what happens. And when we try to compile, our title's gone. I mean, the title, the author, and the date is no longer being displayed in our document. So we better uncomment that so we can see it. Uh, we have a section here called introduction, so now it's time to write our first sentence. So I am so excited about learning LaTeX. And let's compile the document. And we now get our title back, and we see that our sentence has also been included. It's a little bit difficult to see, so let's zoom in there. Uh, and we notice that we have the word LaTeX, but that actually can be formatted a little bit nicer. And there's a command to do that. And that command is, well, LaTeX. Now notice when I use backslash uppercase L, lowercase A, I have a bunch of recommendations here for commands. And the one I want is LaTeX. So I'm just going to choose it. And I'm going to recompile my document. And we can see here that the word LaTeX has been properly typeset. Now, it's time to include a little math in our document, and this is going to be some inline math, which means the math is going to be included in our sentence here, which is, I want to solve the conditional equation, and I'm now going to use one convention, which is the tech convention for doing inline mathematics, and that is to include the uh, mathematical expression within the dollar signs. And notice the space on both sides of those infix plus sign operators and the space on both sides of the equal sign. Now, when we typeset this, uh, we are going to notice that uh, this line has been indented, and that's just due to the formatting of the article class. But maybe you don't want that line to be indented, so we, there is a command for that, and it is no indent. So now when I recompile, there is no indentation. Now, if you'd like to include a space there between the first sentence and the last sentence, we can use this double backslash and then recompile. And we've now forced a empty space between those lines. Now, the LaTeX convention for doing inline mathematics is a backslash open and backslash close parenthesis. So we include the math expression just like we would inside the dollar signs, and it compiles. Now, the solutions to this conditional equation, and notice when I write this uh, sentence, I haven't included it on the same line, but when I compile it, it's included all in the same line. So you can do these breaks in your uh, sentences, but they will not be displayed in the document. And this can be really good when you are typing very long uh, sentences or long expressions. Now, this type of mathematics is what we call uh, display style math, and the delimiters here are backslash square bracket. So here I've started uh, 
a display math environment, notice that I have an error being shown here in red. So I better close that uh, delimiter. And I'm going to write x is equal to backslash frax because I need a fraction for this. And notice I get a recommendation for the fraction command. But if I go up to menu and I go down here to autocomplete and I toggle that to off, I'm no longer going to get those recommendations for the command. So when I start typing backslash frac, it's not giving me any, any help here in terms of possible commands I could use. Now the fraction uh, command has two arguments, a numerator value and a denominator value. Now in this case, I've already included the brackets for the numerator, but notice when I turn off the auto complete of the brackets here, when I do the next open bracket, it doesn't automatically include the closing bracket. So it's probably best to ensure that the um, auto close bracket is toggled to on. It'll save you a little bit of typing and let's turn that auto complete back on as well. So the numerator here is going to be a negative b and then we have our two cases, positive and negative. So we're going to go uh, backslash pm for backslash plus minus, then the principal square root, so that is backslash sqrt. And this is going to have an argument, which is the discriminant here, so b quantity squared minus uh, 4ac, and then the denominator is going to be the product of 2a. So let's go ahead and typeset that, and we notice that the display style math has been centered in our document. All right, one last thing here before we're done with this uh, introduction document. We are going to include one more environment. So this environment is going to have some huge text. So we're going to change the size of the text size to huge. So thanks for watching. And I want to center this text as well. So I'm going to include this in a center environment. So we're going to start off with the command begin, which indicates that we're starting an environment. So begin, and you can see all these different environments popping up, but we want center. And notice I get a warning to close this environment. So we are going to go backslash n, and the environment we are ending is center. So now when I compile, thanks for watching has been centered. Well, thanks for watching this introduction to LaTeX.